Sewing is one of those things that can be so rewarding once you finish a project, but the process itself can feel a little overwhelming and frustrating at times. It can get kind of expensive. It takes a long time. There are a lot of decisions to make about fabrics and techniques and let's face it, you have a life with responsibilities and sometimes uninterrupted sewing time is hard to come by. So today I'm sharing seven practical tips for building techniques and skill so that you can create beautiful garments from scratch. I'll also talk a little bit about your sewing and creative mindset and ways that you can shift your thinking for a more enjoyable sewing experience. So my first tip is to follow a sewing pattern. And you may be thinking like, duh, Casey, that's so basic. <laughs> that's not really a great tip, but hear me out. Especially here on YouTube, there are so many videos and tutorials and just across the web in general for how to draft garments from scratch using your own body measurements. And I love those videos. I think they're actually pretty awesome, but it relieves so much pressure and actually saves quite a lot of time if you have a pattern that's already drafted for you, especially if you are relatively new to sewing your own clothing. I think sometimes that starting with a pattern can feel a little bit overwhelming because there's just so much information to process in the pattern. But that's exactly why I think that starting with a pattern is a good idea because they cover so much information and kind of take the guesswork out of the process. When I was first starting out, I used patterns a lot. I would read patterns cover to cover and pay very close attention to every notch and detail on the pattern pieces. Doing this was like a crash course in sewing techniques and terminology. I also became very familiar with the way that different pattern pieces were shaped and developed a better sense of how to make patterns work for me. I would and still do use Google and YouTube to fill in the blanks for any techniques that I didn't fully understand. And over time, I became so comfortable using patterns that I started hacking them into new styles because I wanted to save money on patterns because I was buying so many patterns. And then I eventually started drafting my own patterns and following some of those drafting tutorials that used to feel so overwhelming to me with much more ease. There are so many great patterns out there to start with. I sell my own line of sewing patterns, shameless plug. And you can also use a pattern database like thefoldline.com to search for big name pattern companies, also called the big four pattern companies and smaller independent pattern designers as well. Etsy is also another great resource for finding inexpensive patterns from independent pattern designers and moodfabrics.com actually has a plethora of free sewing patterns that you can try out. And I've also had a lot of luck finding vintage patterns at thrift stores for less than a dollar a piece. Tip number two is to choose the right fabric, needle, and thread for each project. Fabric choice is probably one of the most important factors in creating a great garment from scratch. And most patterns are designed with a specific fabric type in mind. So choosing the fabric that is listed on the back of the pattern package is always gonna be your best bet. This will ensure that you get closer to the fit, style, and drape of the picture on the pattern package. And it's also a great way to introduce yourself to new fabrics that you may not be familiar with. Once you have a few sewing projects under your belt, you'll get better at picking fabrics and understanding the qualities of different fabric types. A question that I often get is, where do I find fabric? There's no good fabric. Oh, yes there is. I personally have the best luck shopping for fabric online. I can get really specific with my search terms, like Ditsy Floral Rayon Chali or Hunter Green Wool Melton Coating, and I can get hundreds if not thousands of search results, which is, yeah, that can also be kind of overwhelming, but I have so many options to choose from. I won't go too far into the topic on this video because I actually have a whole video here on YouTube about how I shop for fabric. I'll link that in the description below this video. But basically you gotta dig. You gotta familiarize yourself with a lot of different types of fabric and it takes some trial and error. It takes a little bit of time to do that, but it's not hard to do. I also get a lot of questions about how to know which needle and thread to use for each project. I personally like to use Guterman all-purpose polyester thread for nearly every project, unless a project calls for a specialty thread. Sometimes when I'm making jeans, for example, I'll use the Guterman top stitching thread and I like their Mara 70 line of top stitching threads for jeans. But in my experience, Guterman thread is just the best quality and it doesn't shed and it doesn't get all these little fuzzies coming off of it, which also helps keep my machine from getting, you know, too dusty. And then and for sewing machine needles, I use Schmetz universal sewing machine needles for nearly every project. There are some cases where I might need to use a specialty needle, like when I'm sewing with jersey knits or when I'm sewing with denim, like a heavier duty fabric. 
I also like using the Schmetz Microtex needles when I'm sewing with fabrics that are really fine or lightweight, like a silk or a rayon chalet. They just have a really nice, fine, sharp point that kind of helps prevent snagging of the fabric. Schmetz has a really helpful website with resources on how to know which needle to choose. So I'll put a link to that in the description below this video. You'll just wanna be sure to change your needle for each project or maybe even a couple of times if you're sewing a project that takes a really long time to make because a dull needle can cause fabric snagging, it can cause thread bunching, it can more easily bend and break. So keep that needle nice and sharp. My number three tip is don't avoid sewing projects and techniques that look difficult. There are a handful of techniques and projects that many new sewists, and actually some sewists that have been sewing for a long time, seem to be a little bit intimidated by at first glance. Pants, zippers, buttonholes, set in sleeves and swimwear. I myself was avoiding swimwear for a long time and recently figured out a few things that really worked well and made some really great swimsuits. So I'll put a link to that video as well. And look, I still kind of groan and grumble a little bit when I have to sew a zipper or a buttonhole because they just take a little bit of extra focus and attention. But I don't let those things keep me from sewing exactly what I want to sew because that is the beauty of sewing. You can make anything. And once you master certain techniques, you can like you can literally sew yourself anything. And it's amazing. If you're feeling overwhelmed getting started on techniques or doing it on your final project, you can practice it on scrap pieces of fabric. Another thing that I do a lot is I'll sew things together with basting stitches, especially set in sleeves. You can sew a set in sleeve together to the arm side with a basting stitch and then kind of like smooth it out or you can just like take it out totally and redo it. So basting stitches are your friend for things like this. I also recommend investing in specialty presser feet. A lot of sewing machines come with a set of standard presser feet for more common techniques like buttonholes and zippers. And every single time that I use one of these specialty presser feet, I'm amazed at how much work these things can do. They make sewing so much easier for these types of things. Number four on the list is to learn how to fit patterns to your very unique body. One of the garment sewing myths that drives me kind of crazy is that patterns should fit perfectly right out of the package. No, I'm sorry, but no, that, that's just not how it works. Every sewing pattern is just a starting point. Patterns are designed in a way to fit a lot of different body sizes, but one pattern cannot accommodate every unique body shape because there are so many unique body shapes. Infinite, infinite number of body shapes. The beauty of sewing, the thing that you get out of sewing that you can't get from buying garments off the rack is that you can customize the fit to your exact measurements. And you should definitely be doing that. If you're not interested in doing that, you're better off honestly just going and buying clothing off the rack because why put in the effort and the time and the money into making yourself custom clothing if you don't want to customize the fit? It can be challenging at first. I have definitely faced my own challenges with learning how to fit garments. I just kept at it and persevered and now fitting just doesn't cause me that much stress. There are so many resources that can help you with fitting and I've done videos on them here and here and I will link those in the video description below. Number five is to practice getting tight clearances on your finishing stitches. Techniques like understitching, edge stitching, and top stitching have a more professional look if you can get that stitch line a little bit closer to the seam edge that you're finishing. Doing this also makes sure that the edges of folds and seams stay nice and flat and prevents them from additional wear and tear from getting snagged or brushed against or getting caught in like a zipper, for example. When you are sewing, focus on keeping the edge of fabric aligned with the seam allowance gauge on your sewing machine, on your little plate under the presser foot, instead of focusing on the sewing machine needle and the actual row of stitching. This will help keep that row of stitching really nice and straight and keep your seam allowance consistent. If you're sewing multiple rows of top stitching or you're sewing top stitching in an area that you don't have like a folded edge to align to, it helps to just draw it on your fabric with some chalk or an erasable fabric marker. I like to approach the finishing on my garments as an experiment to just see how good I can get it instead of approaching it like a chore that's kind of like something I don't really want to focus on. I just want to get through the project quickly. I really take my time with the finishing and it really does yield a much nicer garment in the end. 
So number six is to remember sewing best practices. And this is actually three smaller tips packed into one tip, but these are things that I do pretty consistently just to make sure that things continue to run smoothly with my projects. So number one is to pre-wash or pre-treat your fabric. And I've talked about this before, but basically you want to launder the fabric the way you plan to launder the final garment. But you just wanna do this to pre-shrink the fabric so that the final garment doesn't shrink when you finally launder it. Number two, spend some time pressing your fabric. I spend just as much time pressing my fabric as I do actually sewing it. So I'm pressing the fabric before I even cut the pattern pieces, making sure to get all of the wrinkles out of it because wrinkly fabric can cause your pattern piece cut to be a little bit uneven. It can mess up the symmetry of your pattern. It can also cause sizing issues. So you wanna make sure that you're working with a you know, relatively wrinkle-free fabric. I also press every seam in between stitches. I am constantly pressing my fabric because this is just gonna ensure that you have a nice, neat finish on your garment. Number three, keep your machine clean. This is really important to keep your machine running smoothly. You wanna make sure that you keep it clear of dust and you're cleaning it pretty regularly. And also oiling your machine. There is a special sewing machine oil that you can put into your machine to keep the parts running nice and smoothly. Be sure to check your sewing machine manual to know when, how, and where to do that oiling and make sure you're only using sewing machine oil. No WD-40, no other types of oil. It has to be sewing machine oil. My last tip is to work on improving your mindset around sewing and creativity. Sewing confidently really comes down to your mindset, I think. That's my, you know, unsolicited opinion on that. Are you the type to give up when things don't go according to plan? Or do you see a creative challenge as an opportunity to learn something new? I'm definitely in the latter group. Whenever I face a challenge, I get determined to figure it out. Sewing is very technical, but it's also very much a creative activity. And creativity really just comes down to the desire to make something and the willingness to experiment with the process. I find that I have the most enjoyable experience sewing when I slow down and I don't rush the process. And this may mean that some days I only sew for 20 minutes at a time, especially when life gets busy. Some days when my sojo is really low, I'll just come in and clean up my sewing room. So I think that that kind of helps prepare my mind for that creative spark when it does happen, but it definitely ebbs and flows a lot. Figure out a way to make it sustainable and enjoyable for you and your lifestyle. All right, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's video. And I'd also like to say hello and welcome to the new subscribers that are here. I posted a video a couple of weeks ago about making this ironing pad right here. and. It has done really well. It's been really exciting to see how well this video has done. It's been my best performing video probably ever. So thank you guys so much for watching and supporting that video and for subscribing to my channel. I do all kinds of sewing stuff here. I love it, I'm obsessed with it. So if you did enjoy this video and you haven't yet, please be sure to subscribe and hit that little bell icon. That way you'll be notified when I release new videos in the future. I'd also like to give a shout out to my Patreon subscribers. You guys helped me pick the topic for the video a couple of weeks ago and for this video. So thank you guys so much for your input there. And if you are interested in joining Patreon and becoming a supporter of this channel, kind of helping to support the work that I do here, I'll put a link in the description below this video to my Patreon if you're interested in that. I'm having a little after show over there, something new I'm trying. So yeah, come hang out and spend a little bit more time with me. Anyhow. I think that is all I have for you today. I will see you in the next video. Bye. And I think that's another important thing to be able to do too, is to, to know when to walk away from something and know when to pivot. I think I am pretty good at being like, yeah, this is, this is probably not gonna work so well. And I can put it aside and not feel a lot of guilt about it.